Several years ago, in Vienna, Austria, there was a man named Theodor Vogelmann. He was a language professor, a divorced father of one, and a serial killer. Beginning in 1990, and continuing for two decades, Vogelmann kidnapped and murdered 20 young women, one per year, always on February 20th. After the fall of the Iron Curtain, thousands of young girls from Eastern Europe came to Austria looking for work. Vogelmann became obsessed with these girls. Their limited knowledge of German was for him, a language professor, a source of great amusement. Vogelmann never explained how or where he met them, but we do know that he drugged them, put them in the back of his car, and took them to his house in the dead of night. He lived alone. When a victim awoke, she would find herself inside a tiny metal chamber, somewhere within Vogelmann's wine cellar. The chamber was one meter wide, one meter deep, and two meters high, airtight with no window or lights, just a single door, triple locked with a complicated mechanism. <sighs> the chamber also contained a matchbox filled with 20 matches and a book of instructions written by Vogelmann. The instructions explained in exactly 20 steps how to open the door and escape the chamber. Vogelmann insisted that if a victim would follow his instructions, she could easily free herself. Each lit match would offer enough time to complete one of the 20 steps. After the final one, she could open the door and walk away. <laughs> However, Vogelmann's instructions were in German. A German carefully written to be too complicated for his victims to understand in matchlight and darkness, in anger and tears, each woman was doomed to fail. There was one other thing inside the chamber. A video camera mounted above the door. Nearly all of Vogelmann's victims spoke to it, begging for mercy, either in their own language or in a broken German. But their cries were ignored and the oxygen inside the chamber quickly ran out. 19 women suffocated to death. This usually took about three hours, sometimes less. Vogelmann then left each body inside the chamber for months. He removed it and then dissolved it with chemicals, as he wrote, when the time was right. <sighs> then there was Hanna Zuskova from Slovakia. She was Vogelmann's 11th victim and the only one to rebel. Like the others, she realized his instructions were not designed to be understood. But after two hours, her breath getting short, she decided not to let Vogelmann determine her fate. <sighs> there were nine matches left inside Hannah's box. She lit them all and set herself on fire her blonde hair going up in flames as she stared into Fogelman's camera, defiant. Sadly, there wasn't enough oxygen inside the chamber. She burned herself beyond recognition, but spent the final moments choking. In 2010, Fogelman murdered his 20th victim, Karolina Varga from Hungary. He was 64 years old and declared himself finished. 20 girls, 20 years, 20 matches each. All on February 20th. <sighs> we know about these murders because of the videos that Vogelmann made. And we know about the videos because he sent them, together with a detailed account of his crimes, to his daughter Sabine.
He mailed this incriminating material on February 20th, 2011, sending it from Vienna's Westbahnhof post office just minutes before closing. He knew Sabine wouldn't receive the package until the next day. Later that night, Theodor and Sabine Vogelmann met for dinner at Sabine's favorite restaurant. She hadn't lived with him since she was a child, but they were very close. And like always, they celebrated her birthday together. It was a lovely evening. <sighs> After saying goodnight, my father went back to his house. It was a beautiful house, filled with books. My father set those books on fire. He set the house on fire, and like Hanna Zhuskova, he set himself on fire. By the time the firefighters arrived, there was nothing left. Not even the chamber. Just as my father had planned it, I received the package the following day. This was before I knew he was dead, you see. So I thought it was a birthday present. And I suppose it was. So I opened his letter, the accounts of his murders, and I read it. You understand that I was confused. I didn't know what my father was saying. That was the only reason why I watched those tapes that he had included. One minute of it and then I knew. And then the phone rang and I heard about the fire. I could have destroyed the evidence. My father left me with that choice. Of course I did the right thing, or so it seems. Now everybody knows everything, or so it seems. I've become the subject of rumor and speculation. And my father, Theodor Vogelmann, has become something of a legend. This is my 20th match. The box is empty and the door is still locked.